Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Hyperconscious Podcast. Alan, what is Hyperconscious? Once you understand why something is the way that it is, now you have the power to change it. Great conversations with great people and great questions are the keys to the kingdom of unlocking your consciousness. Every single action that you do starts as a thought. When you control the way you think, you will control the way you act, and you will control the way you live. That is hyper-conscious. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another very special, as always, episode of the Hyperconscious Podcast. Alan and I were lucky enough to sit down with Mariana Costa. She is the CEO of Dream Homes and Estates, and you will know her from the speech that Alan did in Boston. Yes. Mariana Costa and I have been close friends, actually, since we met about a year and a half ago. She set an intention uh, last year to become a speaker. Now she's speaking all over the country at Keller Williams, and we were excited enough to sit down and podcast with her, pick her brain. She talked about team building. She talked about leadership. She talked about how she was living out of her car at one point, how she had a very wealthy family in Brazil that she could have gone back to, but she didn't want to live someone else's dream. Yeah, her story is next level. It's truly inspirational, and it truly proves that if you really want something bad enough, you just get rid of the excuses you're making. Um, this one starts a little bit different. Mariana talks a lot about her businesses off the bat, which obviously is a great thing because she has very uh, successful businesses. Yes. But 10 minutes or so in, we start getting deep into her past what made her, who she is. So if it seems like it starts off a little slow, give it a chance. I know we've told you this in the past, and you guys have reached out and said that it did pick up. So um, this is a next-level episode, adds so much value, and we're super grateful that we got to sit down with her. Yep. Mariana is a Renaissance woman. She's amazing. Do not miss this one. Mm, Bye. Talk to you soon. No, no, no. Um, Geographically? (laughs) Geographically. 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 This is cool. So I would say make sure that pretty face is shown. Yes, true. They're going to want to see that thing. They're going to want to see that thing, Alan. That face. You good? Ready? gentlemen welcome back to another very special as always episode of the hyper conscious podcast we took a little trip down to the cape today we're sitting with the one and only the most positive person maybe i've ever met in my entire life mariana costa how are you doing today beautiful happy to be here we're happy to have you yes i've been like talking to you guys about this forever so i'm finally like here yep so great we always have a cool story about how it goes from wow, we should have this person on to actually having them on. Yes. I'm going to let you tell the whole story because you've told bits and pieces of how you met, and so just go into that. Be careful. (laughs) (laughs) Don't you go too deep on (laughs) that. Well, that's why we're here. That's why we're here. So um, all of the listeners kind of know of you because Kevin and I talk about all of our endeavors. We talked a little bit on the last Scratching the Surface episode about your event that we went to down the Cape. So you and I met about a year and a half to two years ago now at a book publishing seminar. And um, I remember I immediately recognized you and your incredible belief in dreams and in yourself. Mm -hmm. And I remember the first time we met, we were out to lunch. Uh, I was at the Intercontinental Hotel in Boston. And I remember you said, I want to be the, or I will be, the first woman Brazilian billionaire. Mm -hmm. Self-made. Self-made. And you said it with such a level of conviction that I was like, I want to be her friend. (laughs) And it's happening. I'm already on, the plan is is in action. I love it. I love it. So that's actually a good segue. So then you and I um, worked together a bit. You mentored me a lot financially. I mentored you a lot fitness-wise. And now you are doing 10 push-ups, which you just showed us prior to this in the preamble, which at one point you couldn't do any. I did (laughs) push-ups. Yep. When we first met, you couldn't do any. And now you can... I could only do them in my knees before. Yep. And now you're doing... I can actually do like a real man push-up on my feet. And she just proved that. Yes. 10 times. 10 of them. Yep. And that was the first time I ever saw it. So that was awesome to experience. Thank you for that. Absolutely. You inspired me. You know how you inspired me, though? You didn't just inspire me. You challenged the hell out of me because you were like, that's freaking ridiculous. 
You, 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 Mariana Costa, can't do 10 push-ups? And I remember going back home going, that is never going to happen again. <laughs> <laughs> I am never going to hear that again. You're right. That was ridiculous. Mm. So thank you for challenging me. Absolutely. It, was, it was with love. Props to you, though, because a lot of... So we always talk about feedback, getting feedback. You received a massive amount of feedback mm. in yeah. that moment. Some people run from the feedback... You said, uh, fuck that. Yeah. Yeah. Not, <laughs> it's not going to be like that. Yeah. <laughs> and then, so I think if anything, that truly speaks to your character. Thank you. So we're going to go. To tell me I can't do it. Right? Watch out. Exactly. It's happening. Can you tell us, <laughs> I want to get into your story because it, is, it has blown my mind. I know it's going to blow the, the listener's mind. But can you tell us where you are right now? So you're the CEO of yeah. Dream Homes and Estates. I'm the CEO of two very successful growing companies yes. right now. And it's been a pleasure to manage them. And uh, CEO of Dream Homes and Estates. What is that business? That business is a real estate company that is a very different model. It runs with a different, very different model. And the model is to give. We run with the giver's gain mindset with everything that we do. I'm not saying that there are any companies out there that are not doing that model, but we do it to such a level where people that buy or sell homes with us have access to thousands of dollars worth of free services for their home. Mm -hmm. And people are like, how did you do that, right? So if you today, let's say, this is where it becomes so powerful. Let's say you are, I'll give you a very um, simple example. Let's say you're about to lose your home, okay? Let's say you bought it in the high market. The market started catching up now, uh, but you bought it in the highest of the high and you, quite honestly, don't have money to pay off your home. You are about to lose it because you haven't been paying your mortgages um, on time. And we can start a short sale process for you. Most homeowners, okay, and most real estate agents at that point, all they would be able to do is they would be able to list the property for way cheap to drive the offers, within that property. Mm. So usually on a short sale, they're gonna price the property 20 to 30% below the market. Okay. That's how they drive so many buyers yeah. to the actual listing, and then offers start coming in, and then you bring the highest offer to the bank, yeah. right? So that's one way to do it. The other way to do it would be to say, Mr. Seller, good news is if you work with Dream Homes and Estates powered by Keller Williams Realty, what we can do is we can actually bring out a landscaper that's going to make your yard look great. We're going to bring out someone that's going to take care of all the peeling paint for you. We're going to bring out someone to refinish your hardwood floors. We're going to bring out someone to paint your house. We're going to bring out someone that can replace your countertops. We're, here are all the coupons we have worth the free services for you, and it's not going to cost you anything. The only thing we're going to do is ask you to spread the word about these businesses. The mm. way that they're doing it is to help the community through true collaboration. And all they ask in return is that you let them put a sign in front of your house while they're working on your home and that you spread the word about the great work that they did for you so that they can get other people that they can help as well. Interesting. And now we come in with our team of professional builders, contractors, you name it. And we overnight, and it's not necessarily overnight, but usually a three-week process, we can usually add 20% of value to that house. Wow. Mm. Right? That so you wouldn't have gotten otherwise. Correct. So now that property sells faster because here's the thing that a lot of people don't talk about, and I'm so happy I'm having the opportunity to discuss this. Mm. Did you know that... 30% of the market right now, under 400,000 are first-time home buyers. No. Okay. Here's another did you know. Did you know that the appraiser that goes to the house to appraise the property is going to look for things such as peeling paint. They're going to look for rotted wood. They're going to look for broken glass, broken seals in the glass. They're going to be looking for appliances working. They're going to be looking for the furnace and everything, like the roof and the windows have to be in good shape. Yep. And if that's not all a check, 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 the buyer can't buy. Interesting. The appraisal will not go through. And then you're going to have to call your client three weeks before the closing and say, oops, sorry. 
I know that as your professional, I should have known what that appraisal would have brought, and I should have solved those problems before it became a problem, but I was too busy getting another lead, mm. right? So at Dream, we really believe in that preparation, right? Um, Abraham once said, if you have an ax, give me an ax, and I have six hours to chop down a tree, I'm going to spend four hours sharpening the ax. Oh, uh, yeah. Yep. Right? I love that. So, And it's true. We spend a lot more time in the pre-listing part of the process to really make sure that we're going to solve all these problems up front. With a luxury home, because we do tap into luxury quite a bit on the Cape as well as off Cape now, now that we're expanding into Plymouth, one of the things that we have found in the luxury listings is, is that they're never there. So for them, it's, it's, it's a different value proposition, but still works with the same model. Mm -hmm. With a luxury listing, they don't want to have to go call a painter to go do painting. They don't want to have to call the hardwood floor to go refinish the hardwood floors. They're too busy making money to afford a $3 million second home. Yeah, exactly. And right? th the reason why they hire you is so they don't have to, to deal solve with all the headache. Problems yeah, for exactly. them. And yep. to really have the right people in place to be able to seamlessly help them go from, I want to sell my house to, I want to get top dollar to, thank you very much, you just got me top dollar. Right? So it takes time. Yeah. And that time is something that we invest so that our clients don't have to. So Dream Homes and Estates is growing by word of mouth for mainly those reasons. Yeah. And the fact that we don't make excuses for uh, th why things don't work. We actually, we know that there's going to be a challenge. We've done it enough times. I've been doing it since I was 19 years old. Yeah. So I've only been doing it for a year. <laughs> now. Um, but I've been doing it for 14 years now. And I know what these challenges are going to be. And I work with my team to solve the challenge before it actually becomes yeah, one. Yeah, because you can anticipate. You because you've it. been in the arena for so long. You got it. So a lot of people might have just heard that and said, wow, she's so put together. Mm -hmm. And they would imagine that it's always been like this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Can you no. go into <laughs> 2001 and coming here from Brazil and the whole thing, yeah. your whole story of your car and doing odd jobs and finding the check that changed your life and yeah. that shit blows my mind. You're going to take me there, aren't you? Oh, yeah, please, we're going to go deep. <laughs> please. We're going to go deep because that's what it's all about. Every A lot of people think it's overnight success, but they don't see you working 100 hours a week making little to no, no money absolutely. to survive. And I will get into that. I think that as a segue to the dream homes and estates, um, going into the dream business solutions, and I want to touch base on this point because I think it's important that people understand one of the things I teach a lot, um, I find, I, I personally have a best friend right now that um, has a certain dream, and then she has studied a long time for something completely different than that dream, mm -hmm. right? Um, and right now, she's put herself in that box of, I need to find this job, okay? And this is what I've been talking to my buddy Alan about here, so hopefully the, the hat will fit. So when we, when we look at that box, right, it's, it's okay. You can be in that box, and... You can be just focused on that. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with focus. I get it. However, what I'm talking about is servicing versus selling. There's a big difference between service and sales. And that's mm -hmm. what I teach a lot. So how did Dream Business Solutions come about? Is most of the people that are now giving me these coupons to go help my buyers and my sellers own a business. Yes. Right? Especially the high-end homes. Especially the high-end homes. And they want to usually sustain their branding within that luxury market. Mm -hmm. What does a business need to sustain growth? Leverage. Leverage. What do I teach? Leverage. Leverage. Yeah. Is there a connection between the two? Yeah. You bet. Absolutely. Right? So do you think that when I go to ask them for free coupons, do you think that I say, oh, by the way, as a value added for you helping my client, I'm going to put you into my mastermind group for free yeah. because you're giving me value to help my client? So instead of charging you $500 an hour to talk to me about growing your business, because you've proven to me that you're willing to give, I'm going to give that to you for free. Yeah. And every month we're going to talk. And every month, I'm going to help you take your business to the next level. Is Love that it. a deal? And then there's more for everyone. And then there's more for everyone. Win, 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 win. Everybody win, win. wins, right? 
Then the second thing that happens is once they start getting my coaching and they see my website, my social media exposure, my branding, they see all of that, what do you think happens next? They start to incorporate that into their own businesses. And does that result as a business for me? Yeah, more, more referrals. Right? Yeah, more people. So I get more referrals, yeah. and I also now get to design their website. Yeah. I get to help them with their social media. I get to help them with coaching. Love it. Right? So that's what a lot of people don't understand is that ultimately what you have to ask yourself is when I'm in front of someone, if I only have one service to give, then that is all I have. Yeah. And if that person doesn't want that service, then I'm out of options. Yeah. Right. So what I like to to teach people to believe is to have a toolbox full of tools and don't become the salesperson that's gonna go hey you want to buy this okay yeah. what about this okay what about this T nobody wants everything that looks person. like a nail to someone who only has a hammer you that got type it. of thing you got yeah, it. yeah exactly and then you're trying to sell th to people that don't want to buy that thing correct and so you're not catering a solution to that person correct type of thing and that's a sale yeah right exactly. a sale is someone that's gonna Go push you to buy something that you might not necessarily really see that you need. Yeah, versus a service, which is providing something that you know in advance, to a solution to their challenge. Right? Love so it. if you have a toolbox full of solutions and you can pinpoint the common challenges that the people that you're in front of every single day will have mm. and you create that toolbox for them, you've now leveraged your dream business. So that's, I wanted to segue into that because I think it's important that people walk away with where I was starting with my friend is in this box is that now she's been looking for a job in that box for almost two years. Yeah. And I've been telling her, like, how many college kids do you know graduate college and don't have a job? So many. In what they studied. I wanted to ask you about that. I have a very specific yeah. question on this flashcard that I wanted to segue into. So, and um, I'll go back to my oh, story. For sure, I'm no not worries. running we're, we're, from we're, it. Yeah, no, no, no. Back, I we're, promise. We, want to we get both into have that so, well. many, <laughs> so many questions, so it's totally fine. So you are an employer, and That's I say fair. this all the time on this podcast and just on my social media in general. Like, There's a lot of people out there that are looking. I always say there's two keys to career development. Number one, add more value to yourself, and number two, make sure the right people see that value. You are one of those people, right? You're an employer and you have a lot of employees who we've met many of them. What is it that you look for above anything else in an employee before you hire them? Servant's heart. Servant's heart. Mm -hmm. So the service thing. Servant's heart. The givers. Servant's heart is going to be the person that's going to open the door for you without expecting you to open it for them. Okay. Servant's heart is going to be the person that's going to offer to help you even if they don't expect anything in return. Mm -hmm. The biggest, biggest thing that I find is so many people out there say, yeah, I'm a giver. Really? Are you really giving when you're expecting a result from that? Mm. The minute you attach an expectation, it's no longer giving. It's, it's, it's called an exchange. It's exchange, yeah it's, yeah. it's horse trading. So I'm not looking for an exchanger's heart. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm looking for a servant's heart. Someone that truly believes in the power of giving without expectation. That's Love first it. on my list. Yeah, that's Love beautiful. Um, I have right. actually a top 10, so Ooh, I could share with please you guys do. one day. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, Can you, you share, to, share you the top share five? Yeah, yeah. I just I lit up like a Christmas five. tree. So okay. we do servant's heart, yep. a dreamer. So if you're going to hire someone, like, and I'm going to teach this in class later today, and any of you watching, I don't know if you're going to be able to go back, but go on my Facebook and you'll see the class with today's date. Um, on it, and I'm teaching people how to build a team. We're going to talk deeply about this. But one of the things that I look for is a dreamer. Why a dreamer? Because a dreamer, I truly believe a dream is where it all begins, right? So the way I look at it is when you dream it, you, you almost in a way start to envision. And then as you envision, it gets you excited. And then as you're excited about your vision, you start planning. And the plan makes it possible. Mm. And then as you make it possible, nothing is actually going to become real until you actually schedule it. Yep. Right? So what I look for is someone that's a dreamer because I truly believe that that's where it begins. And I want to be surrounded by people that are going to challenge me to think bigger. I don't ever want to be the smartest person in the room because then I really am in the wrong room. Yes. So I, I really feel that surrounding yourself with people that are going to challenge you to always go a level up mm. is a very important part of my culture. 
Um, the third one, I would say, is a passion. Someone that you can just tell by the way they represent themselves how freaking enthusiastic they are about anything they talk about. Like the other day I was showing my, my new Audi to somebody um, that I was showing a house to, one of my buyers, and I still sometimes go show a house to a buyer if my team is all busy and they need me to come in and help. I'm that leader that's always going to be there for them and help them pick up where they left off. So I was showing it, and I was like, look, the top comes down, and check out the <laughs> red seats, and look, it's got diamond shape. Which is why she's so tan, by the way, everyone. Yeah, that's yeah. why I'm so tan. I don't like riding with the top I was like, you've been on the beach? Like, you're not a beacher, really. That's and she's why like, I got no, a no, no, it's the, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I never have the time to go to the beach as much as I want to, so I might as well tan while I drive. Perfect. Win win. Uh, Leverage. Win win. Leveraging Leverage. my time. <laughs> and that's exactly why I got the convertible, actually. Yeah. But he goes, gee, she sells everything, huh? <laughs> She's really good. Like, she could sell the car right now. And then he looks at me and he goes, be careful, because, you know, you're selling the car so well, I might not be able to afford the house. Because <laughs> I might go have to go buy a convertible. Yeah, right. But it's that enthusiasm, right? So what does enthusiasm stand for? Do you know the acronym of the last four letters of enthusiasm, what that stands for? So look at the last four letters of enthusiasm. What are they? I A S M. Yeah. Have you ever heard what the acronym of that is? And this I learned from Brian Buffini, which is one of my favorites. Mm -mm. What is it? What do we got? I am sold myself. Oh mm. yeah, nice. Write right? that down. I'm sold myself. So when you're sold on something yourself, you're immediately gonna just exude yes. excitement, right? So we look for that. So there's no way we can add someone to dream unless they're like, yeah. Oh my God. This is the company of my dreams. I've been wanting a company that's going to challenge me, that's going to that's gonna hear my voice, where I actually can say something that I want to have created, and a week later, there it is. It's created. Yeah. Right? Not just, hey, I have this idea. Well, we'll talk about it later. Right? So, for the so listeners, real quick. shut down their employees, and that's not right. For, for the listeners, real quick, because a lot of people are out there, and they want to be hired by employers. They want to start their careers and their dreams, and, like... I want to really highlight that these are very intangible, but they're super important. And um, it's it's super important to create these in yourself prior to... You're always being interviewed, no matter what room you're yep. in. You never know. True. Like, you could be in a room, yeah. and you could hire someone when they weren't even looking for a job. Mm -hmm. Like, you would, you actually... I did that reached with Matt. Out, and you did that with me. You asked, you know? And it's like, because <laughs> yeah, you yeah. saw these things in people. What I want people to realize is that employers are always aware and noticing people. They're, if I were to ask you right now, what's the hardest thing to run a business? I would guess that Finding I know the answer. Talent. Finding talent. Thank you. Okay. Retaining talent is every Finding business owner's biggest mm -hmm. problem. So become the talent that is so effing good so that true. everybody wants to hire you. Yeah. I get offered jobs left and right, and it's not because I'm qualified for that specific job. It's no, because, it's because of your mindset. Exactly. People can see... You could be, honestly, both of you. You guys could be successful at anything you put your heart to. Mm. I think the biggest, biggest thing that you have to ask yourself is if you're putting all of your eggs in one basket. Mm. And I think a lot of people do that. I did that this for 10 Mariana years. This is Mariana Miyagi-ing me right now. <laughs> She's I, been no, doing this. No, I'm being very honest. <laughs> I Look, know. I was that person. Yeah. Okay? So, and, and if you want to keep it real, I was that person, and I, I couldn't pay my admins. My admins, actually, with a really growing company, okay, we went through a month where everything dropped. I had seven closings on the board, and boom, one is lost to appraisal. Boom, one is lost because the person didn't want to buy anymore. Boom, the other one was lost because of inspection. Boom, the other one, they changed their minds. All at once. Like, everything just disappeared, and I had no other sources of income. Mm. Why do you think I started learning through that failure of I need to grow another business? I need to grow another source of income. Absolutely. Because there were five to six weeks there that I went without paying four admins, and they all stayed. So you learned that through failure? I did. Interesting. And I also learned who was really in my boat, because you tell me someone that would have retained four full-time assistants that are depending th dependent on that income yeah. for an entire six weeks, and not one of them didn't show up to work. That's amazing. Not one of them didn't go to work with the same enthusiasm. Mm. They still went to work because they knew they could trust their leader. 
right? They knew I would pay them the minute I had the no money. No matter what, yeah. But that taught me a big lesson. I was putting all my eggs in this one darn basket. What happens if that goes dry? Yeah. Am I going to let my vision disappear like mm. thin air because I didn't have a better plan? Yeah. Because I didn't have a backup? Yeah. Right? So I think a lot of people today are in that boat where they're having great businesses and they're running great businesses. But the question that I would have to ask that business owner is, what's your backup plan? Yeah, because cash flow is the lifeblood of your business. And sometimes it can dry. And it can dry up. And Especially it, if you're in the business of sales. And 90, what, 6% or so in America, businesses fail within 10 years? Actually, it's worse. It's um, worse than that. The, from what I know, and I'd have to, to research it again because I heard it probably a year ago, but I heard that more than 95% fail in the first two years. No more kidding. More than 95%. Oh, my goodness. And then the other 5%, the other 5% of people, um, let me go back, the other 5% of people actually... They're like, not even necessarily successful or profitable but they're well, just what afloat. they say is the five percent that stays uh like 80 something percent will drop the following year mm. like so of that five percent correct yeah, yeah. The five percent that stayed will drop the following year and that was actually the year that when i the story i'm telling you about was year three so you almost went under i almost went under but you didn't so let's talk about grit and and this is where we could probably get into your story because you were living out of your car at one point Fifteen years ago, um, and yeah, I want two thousand. Actually, not even fifteen. I was living out of my car in two thousand six. So what's that? Twelve years ago. So you surround yourself with dreamers, Mariana. Oh hell yeah! Not everyone thinks like that. So you, I can already tell, are somewhat. And, and this is me just being as honest as I can. You're somewhat living in a world where everyone thinks in terms of possibility. Yes. Okay, so that there's a lot of people out there that have a lot of trouble to believe in this kind of stuff. I so I want to bring it. I want to bring it real for them. Mm -hmm. You were not always this polished product that everyone's going to see and on this I, camera correct. and on this audio. No. Let's talk about the root so that I we can get to the fruit. I wasn't always this skinny either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you couldn't always do 10 push-ups. I have some pretty big cheeks <laughs> for you to grab on right now. <laughs> um, you, at one point, you lived in Brazil. You moved yeah. to this country when you were a teenager alone, living out of a car. Um, you were cleaning houses mm -hmm. and then you found a real estate check mm -hmm. a commission check mm -hmm. for i think 30 grand 30 38 38 grand mm -hmm. she remembers the number i love of course that. and that kind of was like what would it be like that was your catalyzing moment of what would it be like to my moment was i looked at the check and i said this check should be in my name i love that that was it can i looked you, at it and i'm like this check should be in my name can you go into that progression from from yeah. the way you used to think to that catalyzing moment to the way you think now and the evolution. I know that's a mm. really long question, but I really want to get no, your no, story I'll, out there I'll, because I'll do, I'll do my best. It's truly to, incredible. To deliver. I think the biggest, the biggest shift I would say from that Mariana to this Mariana. I wouldn't say so much mindset because I I always was very positive. I think it's more a matter of going from entrepreneurial to purposeful. Right. Um, we all, there's so many people out there that's, that, that advertise themselves as an entrepreneur. Mm, especially and now. Especially now. And there's a beauty to entrepreneurship. But there's a big difference when you go from entrepreneurial to purposeful, right? So I'll give you an example right now, the difference between entrepreneurial and purposeful. Entrepreneurial is someone that is going to have a great idea, they're going to start putting all of their eggs in that basket. And then what ends up happening is the minute things start not working out the way that they anticipated, the faith that they have in that product starts to mm. dwindle. Be, yeah, dwindle. Dwindle a little bit. And they also don't seem to be able to see past that mountain of challenges that they're coming that they're coming up with whereas a purposeful a purposeful professional always looks at what is it that I'm doing here that I can now apply here so that and how can I utilize what I've learned here and apply here to create an opportunity to make multiple sources of income by doing one thing, mm. right? And purposeful also 
also means going beyond your natural ability. So an entrepreneur is someone that's going to run with what they are born with. Passion, drive, enthusiasm, all of those things we naturally are born with. A purposeful professional is going to break through that natural ceiling of achievement, which we all hit eventually. Mm. And they're going to start focusing on systems, models, fundamental habits that will take them to that level sustainably. Yeah. Make sense? Absolutely. So I think that that's the biggest difference for me is I was always a dreamer. I was always a believer, but I didn't have a written plan. I didn't have accountability. Um, I didn't put it on my calendar to make sure that it was actually done because what's not in your calendar doesn't exist. Yeah. So I didn't actually block time to do it. And by the way, a lot of these laws you're going to see over here, like one of them is going to say what's, on, what's not on your calendar doesn't exist yeah. somewhere. <laughs> Eventually you can find it. But the biggest, biggest thing that, that I find has shifted in me is, is honestly my ability to plan yeah. and hold myself accountable to that plan and then have the right systems and models in place that can support me to break through. Love it. That's Absolutely. That's really the biggest shift. Awesome. Yeah. Can we go a little bit into your story, though? Yeah, yeah. So you came from Brazil. You had a very, very wealthy family in Brazil. Yes. And... The thing that blew me away most about you, you and I have done events together. Yeah, uh, we spoke in awesome. Boston mm-hmm. together. We're, we're speaking again. again. Yep. Everyone, the 10th and the 11th of November. Yes. We are speaking again in Boston. Mark your calendars. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Mark your calendars. <laughs> um, Going to be amazing workshop. Two days. Two days. Full immersion. Unbelievable. Get leveraging wait. your dreams. Yeah. Leveraging your dreams. And leveraging your health to leverage your wealth. That's right. Which is what I'll be speaking on. But you always blew me away with this one particular thing. You had a plan, you had an out. You had an opportunity to go back to Brazil with a very lavish, wealthy, well-off, comfortable lifestyle. Yeah, it would have been nice. And you <laughs> still chose to grind it out living out of your car. Yeah. First of all, no one does that, so that's amazing. <laughs> what? I don't know. Maybe if they no. were in my position, okay. maybe they would have done the same. Not no one, but very few people choose the challenge when comfortable is the option. Honestly. I know I that a lot that. of people in your world do, okay? I but in the, generally speaking, that's rare. I it's very, it. very rare. Mm-hmm. Um, what about you do you think created that? You had the opportunity to go back to a wealthy existence, and instead you wanted to create it yourself and yeah, be like self-reliant. What was, what was your why power? Yeah. I didn't want to live somebody else's dream. Mm. That, was my, that was my willpower. I didn't want to live somebody else's dream. And I think that when you're in a wealthy family, and my family is one of the wealthiest families um, back in the time when I left Brazil, they were one of the wealthiest families that, quite honestly, I knew of. Mm. They owned a lot of property. Uh, my grandmother, actually, that's, that's probably where I got some of my entrepreneurial um, spirit from. Um, a little bit from my mom, too, but my grandmother, she works to the bone, mm. and uh, she's very, very, very heavily Catholic, and um, built a just massive, massive empire. Um, she started with a little store um, on uh, Praça Nova York, which is the location in Belo Horizonte, Brazil. And that store, all of a sudden, I think less than a decade later, she had 14 locations. Um, wow. it's, it's actually, um, all she was doing is uh, making pastries and cakes and... Um, uh, you know, almost like uh, coxinhas and pão de queijos and uh, all of these pastries, Brazilian pastries, um, for weddings and parties. And it's called Boca do Forno. And uh, she ended up selling the the part of the franchise. Um, she ended up l- turning it into a franchise and letting other people open locations for her. Under that brand name. Under that brand name. Yeah, and it's a big, big, st- still in, the ex- ex- in existence today. Very cool. It's still in existence today. Um, but the thing about it was, had I stayed there, um, I, I guess the way to put it is I would have lived by somebody else's rules, right? Mm. So I think a lot of people that, that grow up with wealth, um, they almost are told what they can do with that wealth because it's not their wealth. Interesting. Right? Yeah. So... I wanted to be the captain of my own ship. I guess that's the best way I can put it. I wanted to 
to, to, to set sail towards the direction that my heart told me to versus what somebody else's money told me to. And they had built a great wealth, and, and that's great. And yes, you're right. My mom went back, and she had sold a home here, and they ended up buying a, a, a resort with 12 chalets on the water. And there was a big yacht that they were just touring all over the place with. And I could have been a part of that. And, yes, and, and you know, both of my other sisters went and, and became a part of that. Mm. But I think both of them, if they're listening to this today, they, they both probably look back and they regret that decision. Interesting. Because wealth can also um, easily um, get misdistributed if you don't know how to properly distribute it. Mm. And uh, that's, again, investing all of your eggs in one basket, thinking the money's going to keep coming. Sometimes it doesn't. So today they realize that I, I did build a, a life that I'm proud of. And I think if you were to ask me all day long, you know, what do you value most? Is it having your Audi or is it being proud of how you got that Audi? Mm. Right? Mm, is, yes. it have, is it driving the Audi or is it the fact that you fucking earned that shit? You ah, know what I'm saying? yes. That is a teaser like, clip right there. Yep. Everybody, what's the time? Yeah. <laughs> Replay. Yeah. Um, wow. That's the thing. Like, do you, do you look to that car and say, yeah, my mommy bought it for me? And what kind of satisfaction does that give you? in comparison to, I used to live out of one of those. It wasn't that nice. It didn't have red seats. It actually were cloth seats and there was a bunch of cigarette burns in them. <laughs> <laughs> so I covered them with those Hawaiian covers yeah. with the flowers, yeah. <laughs> I remember like yesterday. Yeah. But I looked at that car now and I realized like I earned that. And I think that there's a sense of satisfaction that there is no money that could ever buy that. Mm. That's the reality of it. That is the one of the best things I've ever heard. Yeah, because a life. lot of people don't, they just want to be seen in the Audi. That would be enough for them. Oh, look at my Audi. And that would be the end of the conversation. I have an Audi and this is why. Mm. I think that also speaks to why you have such a successful business, why you're so, you might be the best person with people I've ever met in my entire life. Yeah, you're very good at you're all, I've never heard you complain once, ever. Don't. Yeah. You don't. <laughs> don't. It's like, I wrote down here I'm on, my, I'm on, happy. on my <laughs> list when I was going to introduce you, what did I write? I wrote spreader of good vibes. That's all you do. You all the way you answer My the phone. My husband yeah. might tell you I well. have a few <laughs> spots sometimes, and he lifts me right back up. But even the way you answer the phone, the way you send messages, <laughs> and I don't know. I just feel like you're probably the most positive person I've ever met, and that is paying off in spades for you mm -hmm. because people can see that and people can feel that mm -hmm. when you walk in the room, you know it's you. You can feel it. Yeah. You can feel it. You can feel the energy. And that's the other thing too that I think earning your success will do for you is it'll build a level of confidence that no money could ever buy. Mm -hmm. Like I, I have friends that are billionaires and I talk to them like they lived out of a car, right? Like, I walk into a room and I could be in a table of billionaires and I'm sitting there like I'm one of them. Yeah. And I'm not a billionaire in my bank account yet, but in my mind I am. And that's where it all begins. That's where it starts. Can that's you talk about that a little bit? Because we always say that. So before I go to bed every night, I say what I'm grateful for that I have. Mm -hmm. And then I say what I'm grateful for that I want to get, but I say it like I have it. I say I'm a millionaire. I am. Mm. Right? Always. I, th I Thank I you for yep. the studio. Thank you for the millions of listens. Yep. Can you... When I tell people to do that, I say you can't just, don't just say it, feel it, feel that, feel yeah. what that's like. What is it like being that person? Can you go into that a little bit and how yeah, you practice so, that? So there's a practice that I do daily. So usually my alarm um, doesn't have to go off. I wake up naturally between 4 and 4.30. It's just no matter how late I sleep, and I know Alan will kill me. <laughs> um, sometimes I go to bed at 12 and I wake up at 4, 4.30 mm -hmm. naturally. Now I get what he's saying. Yes, you got to sleep your eight hours. He's going to keep pounding on me for that. But then my question <laughs> is, why the hell am I waking up naturally, right? So is my willpower that developed where I just naturally wake up when I'm supposed to be exhausted and I wake up ready to dream? You I'm say not I'm not so tired, sure. I'm wired. I'm wired, yeah. right? I'm not tired, I'm wired. I'm, I'm going to literally like trademark that shit. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, but one of the things for me is the very first half hour of my day, nothing happens other than Dr. Wayne Dyer, I am that mm. I am. Yes. I am that I am is a beautiful uh, uh, combination of sounds that were put together directly driven from the Bible. Um, and you just listen to those sounds and you just literally sit there and you think of all the things that you want to become. 
and you actually say it as if you already are. So instead of, I will be a billionaire, I say, I am a billionaire. Mm -hmm. Instead of, I will be, you know, on the radio one day, I say, I am on the radio and I sound awesome, right? So you're saying it as if it's already happening. And that's actually something I taught um, a billionaire, right, that produced $1.2 billion last year, Steve Ryder, when he shout kept saying, Steve. Yes. I will be, shout out to Mr. Ryder, my yes. favorite coach in the world. Steve. And he was saying, I will this and I will this. And I looked at him and I'm like, enough with the I will, man. You are. I am. I am, I am, I am. Mm -hmm. And he's been doing it. You know, he's been doing his affirmations. And um, one of the, my favorite affirmations, too, that I say from Dr. Wayne Dyer is, it's on its way. It will arrive on time. And it will arrive in greater amounts than I ever imagined. Mm. Right? So whatever you want, it's on its way. It will arrive on time when you're ready to deserve it. And it will arrive in greater amounts than you ever imagined. I like that you said deserve it. Um, there's this quote by Charlie Munger. It's a harsh quote, but I used it at the speech. He says, um, in order to get what you want, you must first deserve what you want. The world is not yet a crazy enough place to reward a bunch of undeserving people. I use the gym all the time. Mm -hmm. You can want to be in shape all day, but if you're never in the gym, you don't deserve to be. And it's hmm. nice that you said you, des you have to earn it yeah. by giving mm -hmm. more of yourself, more of your time, mm -hmm. more of your energy, more of your money. You Absolutely. have to invest yourself in order to earn something. And I just love that you mentioned deserve. Yeah. Because we can sit here and say, I am, I am, I am, but then we have to follow that up with action. And with well, earning you know, it, a person that backs that up too is uh, Will Smith. He says that all the time. Mm. You know, I I have to grow into the person that I'm meant to become, right? Yeah. You have to grow into that person you're meant to become. Another person that backs that up, and we learned it from Ryan Snow. Yeah. Right. Um, we we all talk about wanting to grow businesses. Mm. We all talk about wanting to have the yachts and the vacations and the financial freedom. Um, we all talk about it, but realistically, none of that's going to happen until you grow yourself. Yep. Your business will grow to the extent that you do. Another bold law, it's going to be somewhere up there. Yep. Your business will grow to the extent that you do. I don't know if they have every bold law in here. See, you get what you deserve from your imagination. Oh, I'm in the way. Right? Yep, it's all good, that. but don't mistake movement for achievement. These are all very related to what we're talking about because... The way you have to look at it is, how will your business grow if you're not growing? It won't. You're it always going to be the bottleneck to your you own success. You are literally the mirror. Yeah. Right? So when you look at yourself in the mirror and you're unhappy with what you see, something inside has to shift before the outside shifts. I love that you just said that, too. I try to tell my clients, and I say, I know this is a taboo, but I'm going to bring this for the listeners here really quickly. My fitness clients, I say... If you want to look at the truth, this might hurt, but this is the truth and this is feedback. Just stand in the, in the mirror alone, naked. What do you see? And be honest with yourself. Are you happy with it? Mm -hmm. Because if you're not, then now's the time to start making change. And by the way, if you keep covering it up with clothes and never taking a look, you won't have the pain in order to change it. That's true. You won't face the truth. I feel like you've, and, you're and really that good. That is very true. That, that, for me, it was a different shift. Um, because for me, it was more of a health versus my look. Of course. That's how. And but I you can tell when someone looks healthy. Correct. That, that I, let Correct. me bring that. To, it's not Correct. just aesthetics. It's do you look like a healthy human being? Absolutely. Physiology and psychology are super connected. To I be agree. honest, when you and I first met I and you said that you couldn't do a push up, one of the things that I was like, oh my God, like you have the most incredible psychology mm -hmm. I've ever seen. And At I that point, do a push -up. but I was like, but your physiology, I'm like, wait a minute, you know they're connected, even if it's 80 20. Even though I look like I'm yeah. in great shape. <laughs> exactly. I actually think I remember saying that. I mm -hmm. said, the biggest enemy to great is good enough. Mm -hmm. And because you already look so incredible, mm -hmm. that's your actually biggest bottleneck. Correct. Interesting. And yeah, now you're doing good 10 push ups. Enemy for great. Yeah, I just did it. I'm, I was the right feedback. Right in front of my physical coach over yes. here. <laughs> Notice that Mariana and I are each other's feedback. We both are constantly challenging each other, even oh, during yeah. this, by the Absolutely. way. It's really kind of cool. It's <laughs> <choking us. laughs> Yeah. I yeah. like how I'm not getting focused. Nice, <laughs> so, nice yeah. and safe over here. <laughs> nice one. So, speaking of safe. We always talk about comfort zones. Yeah. So we're going to Florida to podcast. We're going oh, yeah. to Arizona for an event. I hate planes more than almost anything other than <laughs> sharks. And um, so naturally when all this is happening, everything in my body is like, no, 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 no. You don't want to do that. You got to get on the plane. But I, I can 
logically think you need this is necessary this is necessary in order to have the best podcast ever this mm. is necessary in order to have these next level guests like yourself like there are s- certain things you're gonna have to do that you don't want to do and oh, you're yeah. you're scared to do mm-hmm. how can we get people to realize that in the moment it might be terrifying in the moment it might be the scariest thing you've ever done but in a month you're gonna look back and say wow I'm glad I did that mm. wow this is what I took from that experience how do we get I asked Matt this the other day I said, Matt, you are the person who just does what should get done, no matter what. He just does. <laughs> no sleep, sleep. He just does it. Yeah. And I said, why do you do it? And he, he sat there for a second. He's like, wow, that's a really good question. I don't... He's like, because I know what it's going to get me. I know what a 5 a.m. workout's going to get me at 5 p.m. when I get to go home <laughs> and I've already worked out and I've already eaten well because I worked out at 5 in the morning. Mm-hmm. What does, you know, recording a commercial or, or all the things he's been doing with you... He's do everything he does with you is fear chasing. Yeah, because he knows what it's going to get him. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Matt, I love you, brother. Love you, brother. <laughs> um, Welcome to the dream world, yes. Matty Heisman. So how do so you get? How do you get people to get over their fears, get out of their comfort zones, and like, what did you do to do that? Mm. I think for me, it was fired up. Fired up. <laughs> you just fired me. Fired up. up. He fired me up too. And that's a tough question because I think everybody struggles with it. So I think everybody's going to have a different answer. Um, so I'm glad that you're asking me. For me, I would say I'd, I relate a lot to Matt. Um, and I guess something that always sticks with me is how do I know I can't do it if I haven't tried it? Mm. Right? Like, I'm the kind of person, right, that somebody will say a million fucking people haven't done that. What makes you think you can be the one to do it? I say, because I haven't tried. Mm. Just because a million people tried to do it and failed, I still choose to believe that for me to know that I'm going to be in that boat, I have to try it. And I have to try it at my best. And what if I am the one to succeed? I choose to believe that I can't say no to myself until I've tried it, right? So that's it for me. Like, I don't want to ever be the person that actually like gets to my 80s or 90s or 100 years and go, oh, I could have been all of this and I could have changed lives. I could have improved uh, people's ability to dream more, but I was too scared to take a leap of faith in myself. Is that really what I want to die with? Fuck no. Mm. Right? So like... I want to I wanna go knowing that I did everything that I had in my power to do. So that's it for me. I'm not going to ever make myself an excuse for not doing something. And it's good that you asked that because I'm this close to walking out of dream homes and estates, out of production, right? So I'm this close to, to, to calling my team and saying, hey, guys, you know, I got 57 market centers from Keller Williams, it's just getting started all over the country, inviting me to come speak, paying me thousands of dollars. I love you all, but I'm out. Mm. And have fun running the business. And I'm like this close, and I, I fight with this battle all day. But I have never given my team a shot to show me how good I could be powered by them. I never have. Mm. By the time I had my rock star team, I was already too busy doing something else, growing the second company, Dream Business Solutions. Mm. So I never showed myself or my team how good we could be together. Because I was too busy hiring. I was too busy training. This is the mirror right now. I was too busy coaching. Yes. And and this is a realization that I had had while I was out in Texas last week. Because I see these people on stage, or a couple of weeks ago, um, I was in Texas, and I see these people on stage talking about, you know, selling a thousand homes. And Steve Ryder has sold over a thousand homes with his wife Beth. Mm. And I'm sitting there, and I'm going, I have never actually had a year where I sold more than a hundred. Interesting. On Cape Cod, and I get it. It's a second home market. Nobody has to buy. Nobody has to sell. Everybody's like, yeah, if I buy 10 years from now, it's all good. You know, look for 10 <laughs> years from me. And I'm like, I will. And yeah. I do. <laughs> and sometimes I've had clients that took five darn years to buy. And I looked for five years, but I found their dream home. So, mm. like, 
But for me, what I what I what I realized while I was out there is I never gave my team a shot to really show how good they are. And let's face it, I'm not going to du duplicate myself overnight. And how am I supposed to hire a newbie and or someone experienced that has tacked, stacked up all these bad habits mm. and expect them to show how awesome the, the admin team is? So I look at people like Carolina and Valerie and Sarita and Vanya and, and the hearts that they have to be in that company. And they go to work every day with so much passion and enthusiasm. And I'm like, I cannot walk away from this company without showing how awesome they are. It's not even about how awesome I am. It's about how awesome they are and how great of a team they are to empower me to go and sell 100 homes. So I'm bringing myself back into that, into that basics, right? That's why I'm teaching these classes on a monthly basis to, to, because I believe that by teaching, you're learning. Oh, right? yeah, sure. Absolutely. So by teaching, you learn. And I think that if there's a, a higher level of learning is teach it, mm. right? So I'm almost in a way bringing myself back to those basics. fundamentals, fundamentals. Back to that's the important. fundamentals. Habits, yes. that's super important i do that with my fitness clients it re it focuses me on the fundamentals and exactly. i'm like wait i'm asking you to step on the scale every What's day a, what I'm, time are we supposed to end oh yeah we're uh, good i'm looking at the clock i'm all keeping right. you good all right. mariana's right. got us, Making sure. mariana's is, got it, us. Is, it, is it it's is it the right time yes. right now is it 12:20 yeah. yeah. over there yeah, we're okay good. we're good how much longer do we have because we have a couple questions we always ask i would ask. say we got another 20 minutes oh wow love it if you guys want to go grab lunch. Yeah, because we got to break down before you're... Yeah. So, so I say we do another 10. So another do 10. your question, I'll do my question, and then okay. wherever we have... You got 10 minutes, awesome. make it count, Whoa, baby. No. Oh, yeah. The pressure. This has been unbelievable. Thank you so on. much for yes. doing this. Seriously, this is... Thank you for having me. You got all the feels. We appreciate feels. it. Yeah, because you can tell everything you say is real. You yeah. Can, I can see you, like, thinking of it, and then you see it come up. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. It, and, it, and it hits your heart, and then it changes. It's the whole thing. It it's is the whole thing. thing. Oh, my goodness. As they say. He's um, getting red, everybody. Can you see him? Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> a little bit red. It's because Mariana's got me blushing over here. You, I do want to ask one. So I ask uh, guests the same question. Kevin has his kind of question that he always likes to ask, too. But one sec, I want to ask you, what, what was the catalyzed moment in Texas that got you to realize this? Was it? I, I think um, it was John Maxwell. Uh, I got to see him live. You did? Yeah. And I awesome. live streamed it for you. You it's did? On my, yeah, it's on I my Facebook. I need to look at that. Wow. Um, I cried. I was actually, uh, I was a weeper. He moves <laughs> people. He moves mountains no, and with emotion. It was emotion. so crazy, crazy because it was exactly what I had to hear. Um, he does. He's Emotions make you act. Emotion equals emotion. Mm. He, um, he's really funny, too. Yeah. I, I hadn't listened to Did he to pull John out his Maxwell laminated cards? Much. He he didn't, but he Ugh. he did start with "Hi, I'm John. I'm your friend. And I'm your friend." Yep. And um, I'm like, I gotta come up with a little opening line. Like, yeah, <laughs> yours is. Inspired me. Yeah. Inspired. Keep dream on, dream on. Dream on. Well, that's the end quote, right? That's uh, what I end is my calls happy with. Happy Thursday. I to, Hi, I'm Mariana, and I'm your friend. I'm a dreamer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Maybe perfect. That, there it is. It. There it is. I'm coming out. You heard it here first. Um, yep. So I, you heard it. Here <laughs> you heard first. it here first when she's my. Uh, I think my moment was when he said, "Everything worthwhile is uphill." Mm. Oh yeah. That yeah. was a big quote for me. Everything worthwhile is uphill because I was starting to feel like, but 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 this is calling my name. What's what's three to five thousand times fifty seven? Yeah, I have that 171. Like, like almost two hundred thousand dollars just sort of waiting for me to yeah. just go speak and do what I love. Yeah, teach. Why am I here, selling houses on Cape Cod? Why, right? And I kept asking myself, why? Why am I not going there? What's holding me here? Mm. And and I think that that's when I realized because I haven't, I haven't really given my team a, sh a chance. I'm still here because I realize I haven't done my best. Interesting. Right? So I'm not going to walk away from something half-ass. I'm not going to walk away from something that I did halfway. Yeah. And I, I, I'm like so close. We are so close. We have every, every opportunity to be the best, number one, the one, the only real estate company people will ever think of when they buy or sell on and off Cape Cod because we care and we have solutions and we, we, we have solutions that nobody has ever even heard of. Mm -hmm. Do you know someone that's going to give you like 
hundred thousand dollars worth of free services for your home when you buy? No, like, no. Right? Well, I do. Nobody's I do yeah. actually. Yes, yeah. yeah. we're sitting with <laughs> we're one. sitting with her. <laughs> Nobody's doing that. Yeah. I don't have a hundred yet. That's my goal by the end of next year. Right oh. now, I have about fifteen. Oh, okay. But but that's a start. Very right? clear goals. Fifteen, Love it. fifteen, a hundred thousand by the end of next year in services because then I want to start doing what I said about you know taking someone's home and right now we can we can probably remodel about 25% of their house I want to be able to remodel 100 I love it right I want to be able to have a coupon for anything that could happen Were you with uh, So by the way if you're a business listening to this give me a give me a shout we got to collaborate and we got to put this program together it's called Dream Gives and it's gonna it's it's gonna be the new way of advertising. Period. Love it. Love it. Love it. New yeah. way of advertising. Were you with Steve giving. after that speech with John Maxwell? Were you with Steve at this I event? I wasn't. Oh, Steve okay. um Steve actually had to leave later that day. And um I have to say that was one of the moments. The second moment is I got an opportunity to meet Chris Waters, which has um his own team. He's thirty four years old. He's under. He's no. He's not under Keller Williams. He has his own company called Waters International. Shout out to Chris. Mm. What's up, Chris? He's you had a awesome. lot of breakthroughs in Texas, huh? You had a lot of breakthroughs in Texas. I did. This was an immersion event. This was a real estate event. This is why Derek got into real estate because he wants to be able to come to these events with me because That's they're awesome. mind blowing. You got to come to um, High Performance Academy with I us will. on the twentieth. Get me a ticket. I'll I be there. I will get you one. Let's and make let me this know happen. the date so I can block it because I do time block like nobody's business. Yes, I've so. seen that. <laughs> <laughs> Your calendar <laughs> you scares calendar, the shit yeah. out of me. So I think the <laughs> other breakthrough <laughs> was Chris. So Chris Waters, Chris Waters gave me the opportunity to spend seven hours in his office. I was there for the entire day. Wow. I landed on that opportunity by accident, but I don't believe there's ever such thing. Mm. I was in the right place at the right time, and I was ready to take the right opportunity when yes. it presented itself. Take action. Right? So willpower is never on will call, right? So you have to be ready for when the opportunity presents itself. Always and prepping. And I was ready. Yep. So making a long story short, he actually showed me that at 34 years old, he has a $600 million team. My goodness. And he actually net a million dollars in three years. He was living out of his girlfriend's couch. And in three years, he net a million with his real estate business. My goodness. Good for him. And I'm looking Is he trying to get on a guy. podcast? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I got, he's going to be here. I'm going to be interviewing him so I can see if I can back to back. Absolutely. I'll ask him. You're the best. Be you're the best. In, yeah. yeah, he's going to be here in November. I'm just so the listeners know, you're amazing at networking. You said the fortunes in the follow up. I got that always. written down. Yeah, you I got do. That written down. Yeah, I always remember up. that. Like, she's so good at networking. You're incredible at networking. Thank you. I love That's it. That's how I Absolutely. build my business. I better be. <laughs> yeah, right. <God laughs> so, how I build my business. Do we want to hammer the two last questions? Yeah, let's questions? hammer the two yeah. last questions. Oh, so, my question I ask everybody what do you hope to accomplish before you die? I want to give a billion. Give a billion. Yeah. I love that. And see how and I don't hope see how crystal hope. clear I'm she is to. with her vision yeah. of what she wants to accomplish before I she dies. I am giving a billion before I, love I that. die. I love as that. As long as you keep me here until I'm about eighty. Oh well. I'm we're talking gonna... to you. <laughs> <laughs> keep so doing those push-ups. Keep push me here, please. Because by sleep. eighty, yeah, I'll be some, able to give a billion. Sleep, <laughs> hydrate. We'll keep you healthy. You so I love more that. than four hours a night. I got it. That's a beautiful answer, and I think that again, give a billion. It speaks to the person you are. Unbelievable. So this is the question that I. Uh, intend to ask every guest. I believe there's a part of us that never changes. I think it's the relationship to the infinite universe, God, spirit, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. What part about you never changed? My positivity. Mm. I've always had a positive outlook on life. No matter um, how dark. No matter how dark it was. Ah, I yeah. think that's beautiful. You're the light. I always sought the light at the end of the tunnel, no, no matter how dim it looked. <laughs> It right? could have been like barely existing. <laughs> it could have actually been pitch black dark at some point, yep. but I still saw the light beyond the darkness. That's the belief. And I think that that's the belief mm. that that I I have never really wavered. Your from. results in your life right now, I believe, are in direct proportion to that belief. I because think. no matter how dark it got, you kept pushing. Well, and I think that the biggest thing too is because of that belief, I've been able to inspire mm. other people to believe in themselves too like i think that the, the best idea i can give you guys today is whenever you interview a leader like me is interview their staff Ooh, interesting Re interview the people that can actually speak about them and you might not get them to do it because usually the staff are the admins which are the high s high c and hate video mm. but if you did it without video if you just did it with audio 
you may get some really amazing insights on how the people that are the employees speak of their leaders. Interesting. That is a great point. Just just throwing it out there. Very, I'm going to be doing cool. that on Dream TV. Is not only bringing the leader, because I'm launching Dream TV, by the way. It's going to be awesome. So you guys are going to be on it. You're not allowed to ask um, Kevin about me. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'll, I'll air them right out. That's when, yeah. you get the, that's when you get a lot of truth. Pull back the curtain. This is an interesting uh -huh. point. That that's is very interesting. That's when you get the truth. So we are running out of time, but I want yeah. you to plug where can people find you online, plug Instagram, everything. Facebook, everything. Plug all your businesses. Where can they find you? I will be buying a house from you when I'm ready to buy a house. So yeah, I only, too. you know what I mean? So Anywhere let's in the world. Let's do it. It's yeah. not called Dream Homes and Estates International for no right. reason. Yeah. Like we can help people all over the world. And speaking of that, before I just launch it, um, Keller Williams is coming out with an amazing tool called Kelly. They actually designed a Siri for real estate agents. Oh. So I can just click and go, hi, what's my production volume for this year? My goodness. Hi, how many calls do I have to make today? And can you please show me the list? Oh, jeez. It's a great <laughs> idea. <laughs> it's how many so calls? so sick. Uh, three. Um, <laughs> like, hey, how does the market look like in this area? I used to have to run hours of comparables. Now I can just say, hey, what's the market snapshot of this area? Love it. They are designing the Siri for real estate. What a time to be alive. Right? So what awesome. Right? What a time to get in real estate. True. Yeah. Right? So one of the things that they're doing, too, is through Kelly, you can, as you go to events, everybody has their own QR code. And you can scan each other's QR code. So now when you go to the search bar and you type in North Carolina, Every Asian that I've ever met will oh, show up. Wow. Ooh, very cool. So if you say San Diego, every Asian I ever met in San Diego will show up. Again, so networking, 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 networking. So now if someone here is going, gee, I really want to relocate, but I don't really know who I would call, and I don't want to fall in the hands of somebody I found on Zillow.com that I have no idea how good they are. You know what? You call the Dream Homes and Estates team. And you can reach us anytime. Just go on dreamoncapecod.com. Go to keytomydream.com. Those are two main portals to our website. You can also just call us direct at 508-420-8888. And you can always call my cell phone direct at 508-292-6420 because I'm always here for you no matter how high up the ladder I get. I'm always going to have people here helping me be able to keep up the leverage. And I think the biggest thing, too, is I'd love for any of you to write me reviews. And usually people that write me reviews go in an exclusive access to a lot of my videos. I have a lot of inspirational videos, educational videos. So anyone that writes me a review um, actually gets access to these videos mm -hmm. so that they can listen to them. I don't have them on YouTube. I, I choose to uh, run things differently. You could probably bring me on to talk just about that how I leverage through video, how I leverage with SEO and all that good stuff. Come to the event if you want to learn about yeah. that. She talks a That's lot about good. leverage through video, yeah. which, by the way, is going to be huge in the future. Yeah. Huge, yeah. huge, huge. Well, We're think of it this notes. way. We're yeah. taking the yeah. word dream homes pretty much, right? So whenever, like, this came from a client. Yeah. So now people, like, I have a dreamer pillow in my car that came from a client. And the name of the car is Dreamer. Yeah. So now I have a pillow in the back seat of my car with Dreamer, right? But they're all coming from clients. So when people are talking about branding, yeah, I think of I think oh, of yeah. you too. This when is I, yeah, something dream. you have got to come to this event for, <laughs> right? Because now yeah. you see Dream, and who do you think of? You, Costa. every time. Yep, every time. It's the power of branding, yep. right? So you're associating Dream with Mariana with, Costa with, with the, what we're doing, with the vision. Which is of also dream. why you need that new opener. That's right. Hi, my name is Mariana, and, and I'm, a I'm a dreamer. That's right. It so started here. I'm folks. really excited about that. And if anybody wants to write reviews, it's I have a dream com and chew meaning number two. I have a dream com. Got it. You can also write it on review the dreamers .com. Um, And those will take you there. And then we also have I have a um, I have a dream com, review the dreamers .com, and your dream review .com. Those are three websites that will just take you, three links that will take you straight. If you just go put them on Google, it'll take you straight to the pages where you can write a review. We usually source, um, usually once a month, we go back to see everybody that's written a review and we add them to our exclusive video list so they can start getting videos from us. Love it. So Beautiful. it's a win-win. Yeah. You're always about the win-win. Love it.
Giver's gain all the way. Giver's gain. Well, we will get, and we know you have a class that you have to teach, and we are going to get yes. some lunch. Yes. We appreciate Thank you guys the shit for having me. Yeah. Thank you for coming on, <laughs> dropping so much knowledge, going deep with us. So I'm going to get to sing next time, right? Yeah, you want to sing right now? Oh, oh, yeah. poem. oh the poem, yeah. The poem, super fast for the listeners. Let's, all right, all let's right. give a little important. context for this of how this happened. That You just so found this I today, just right? found this going through one of my bags. I have a lot of, a lot of bags because I like to match my outfit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and her so. lipstick as well. Yes, yeah. usually. <laughs> um, I found this newsletter. Kevin's Anyone shade didn't can work. see it. Sorry. Um, yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> shit on me. <laughs> Sorry, brother. So this was actually a volume, December 20th, 2011. And I, this is how I started in real estate, everybody. I used to design these, new letter, news, these new newsletters, right? Mm. With the Cape Cod Market Watch in the back. And then I had a quote of the month. Um, I had a gift certificate up for grabs when people called and they answered a certain question. I would give them a gift certificate to whatever restaurant they wanted, whoever was the first person to call and answer that. Um, like, so anyway, so I wrote this poem. It was around Christmas time. And it goes to show that the dream was always within, right? So mm. it's called the Christmas state of mind. And the poem goes like, goes like this. Christmas time is here. What a better time to thank the ones who brought us cheer. It's not about receiving gifts, but instead believing the gift you give will bring us near. The gift of hope. A gift so clear of any doubt or fear. And I wrote this, by the way. Yes, mm -hmm. I wrote this. <laughs> <laughs> this year may have brought some tough times. But even with difficulty in our way, we walk strong to find solutions which will teach us so much we would have never learned if those difficult times had never come. Mm -hmm. I'm looking back to seeing if I wrote this out of my car, but I don't think I did. I think I was already out of the car by here. Today I take this time to thank the ones who supported me, because if it wasn't for you, my longing success could never be. Grew up knowing, grew up knowing you should treat others the way you would treat yourself, because you never know the day you may need to ask for help. I appreciate every struggle that has come my way because it always showed me I could never lose sight of what I know today. It makes me so happy to be pleasant to the ones I meet and network with because mm -hmm. I know one day they will smile when they think of me. Work through the steps using my patience to save you all the troubles and all the frustration. I'll spend 12 hours of the day on the phone knowing the calls I make will open the door to one's dream home. Mm. Mm. All the feels. Thoughts so with dream things. home was there. Thoughts dream home things. was there. Day one. Yep. Right? It was always in your heart. It was always dream home. I'm and so yeah. glad you found that and I'm so glad you no, were it was to perfect. share that. Yeah, I'm, I'm really glad because if I ever lose this, I'll have the podcast room. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you gotta hang it up somewhere. <laughs> yeah. I gotta hang it up. You're right. All right, ladies and gents, we will let you go and uh, we hope you guys enjoyed this episode as much as we enjoyed recording it. It was dope. We learned so much. Unbelievable. As we always do. And, and we have to end with... Dream, dream on, dreamers! On dreamers. <laughs> Enjoy, guys. Talk to you soon. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, we hope you enjoyed that episode featuring Mariana Costa. Up next, we have a short 20-minute scratching the surface episode. What are we talking about, Alan? We are talking about passion. What is it? How do you find it? <clears throat> Why does it matter? And how do you know when you've got it? So passion, purpose, all those things are kind of connected, but when you find something that is greater than yourself, you're willing to become more than yourself to accomplish it, there's a good chance that it's a passion of yours. We talked a lot about the idea of happiness and passion, but what really is behind it is actually, you break it down into several parts, joy, happiness, and fulfillment. It's The framework around this episode is super important. Yeah, we had a lot of breakthroughs in yeah, this episode. Uh, and hopefully you guys will too, and we hope you enjoy it. Talk to you soon. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much for listening to another episode of the Hyperconscious Podcast. Going hyperconscious will absolutely change your life because if you understand why something is the way it is, now you have the power to change it. If you going hyperconscious with us has changed your life in any way, please share this episode with one of your friends because the more people that go hyperconscious, the better this world's going to be for everybody. And if you would kindly leave us a five star review on iTunes, that would help us make more people hyperconscious and we would be greatly appreciative. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>